Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock with a little color study here on Ellen Hudson's channel. My friend Lisa and I are over on the blog. Lisa's got some other studies with these same colors. We're looking at pinks and reds since it's Valentine's and we decided to tackle the Quinn Rose and Pearl Scarlet that are in the Daniel Smith Essentials set. And I'm also adding some Bordeaux. The first one I squeezed out there was the Quinn Rose and I put these in little dishes, but you can certainly mix them on a plate or on a tile or something. I don't automatically put everything into a pan or into my palette. When I buy a new color, I usually just spend some time testing it and I'll leave these little dishes out on my studio table just so I have some color to play with and keep trying different things just to see what it will do when it mixes with different colors, different techniques, etc. until I decide if it goes in the palette or not. So this third color is the Pyrrole Scarlet, Pyrrole Scarlet, Pyrrole Scarlet. I don't know how you say it, but it is what it is. It's the other color in the Daniel Smith set. It has warms and cools in it of the three primaries. So you get six colors in that one. It's a great starter set. So get these three all mixed up and then I'm gonna be ready to do first some little tests and second, I'm gonna make some cards. So we're gonna do this a little bit systematically. This time I'm not gonna test these with all of the Daniel Smith Essentials colors because I already know that they work really well. So I wanna see what they do with this Bordeaux. So I'm gonna paint first a little heart in each one of the colors. This is the cool one. And the thing that makes it cool in my mind is do I see sunshine in the color? And this warm red on the right hand side, I see sunshine in that, I see yellow and it feels sunnier and warmer. The other feels like it would be more in a shadow. So there's not any laws about what's warm and cool and there's no laws against mixing warm and cool. It's just something that makes different kinds of colors. The middle one there is the Bordeaux, which dries duller than I was expecting. So I, I kind of had some mixed feelings about it when I finally got it and started playing with it, but it's kind of a purplish pink. And here what I did was move the paper around so that mostly I didn't have huge puddles. I waited for some of the paint to dry so I could drop some color in while it was good and damp and it'll still move, but it wasn't all puddled and I wouldn't get all kinds of kind of blossoms and, and bleeds and all that sort of thing. And then I dried it to see what would happen. And both of them mixed fine, but the, the cool pink, the, the cool quin quinacridone rose, tends to blend a little bit better, which tells me that that Bordeaux is probably a cool color because it's gonna look better with it. But it's not that you can only use it when you're using cool colors. You can use the Bordeaux with warm colors. So I'm gonna do both. And I've taken the Mondo Chrysanthemum set and I've stamped it in the corner of my papers and these are taped down to a board so that nothing will move, etc. And I'm using a silver brush. This is the number 12, I believe. And it's the, the big brush. And I'll switch to the number eight later to do this. And I'm painting first with clean water. And why am I doing that? Because I get as nervous as you do when I'm trying something new and I just want it to work. And here I wanted it to work kind of simultaneously for video so we could see the good comparison. And what I've done is painted inside all of those little petals so that the, the little ends of the petals, and if you have the stamp, you can see when I zoom in closer, you'll see a little bit more of what I mean, but the edges of the petals then can remain lighter because that's what I want to do is create some depth in this. I want the the main color, the Quin Rose and the Pyrrole Pyr Pyr Scarlet to be the main color of the flower with the Bordeaux serving as the shadow color, but that means I need to leave some lights. It's really hard to reserve lights in something like this, and it is a bit of a complex stamp, but it's not all that hard. I'm not being super accurate. I'm just kind of slapping it on there and allowing a few of those edges to remain white. And the bottom edge, I've painted around the bottom edge and you'll see in a few minutes how I'm gonna handle that one because I want that to drain down the page and be really loose and washy down the page. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the Pyrrole Scarlet and this color is working okay. It's, it feels more like a tomato red than a, 
a cool red, so it doesn't feel very mum-ish to me, but maybe I don't know mums very well. I'm not really sure. I just kind of picture it more of the other pink color, but that's fine. So the water is drying by now, so it's not moving as much. So I'm having a little struggle with that. That's part of trying to make a video and make everything happen all at once. Oopsie daisy, did not paint fast enough. So I would not recommend trying to do two at once. So here I'm gonna just take my spray bottle and just let the water drain down the page by moving the, the board and tipping it so that everything is just has some gravity pulling the color down. And then while it's still just a little bit damp before it's completely dried, I dropped some of the Bordeaux into the centers of each of these because I wanted the color to really blend in softly as it moved around outside of that core of the flower. And then I'm gonna add more layers to it as I move on through the rest of the card. So doing this while it's wet, but not super, super wet, will help the color to stay kind of where it is, but not go too far. It, it just, you know, kind of, it's gonna work. That's all I'm saying. I did my heat setting to dry it so that it wouldn't move very quickly. I usually like to just let things air dry. And then I went in with my brush to start working on the smaller areas. And this is my number eight brush. I don't tend to use a really tiny one. I know lots of people get really freaked out by using the number eight for something like this, but I find I'm looser when I use a bigger brush. If you're trying to loosen up, that's one of going to be one of your key secrets is to switch to a bigger brush. I always go with a little bigger than what I think I need and I can always start all over again if if it's not good enough but it has really taught me to be loose. So here I'm trying to go into some of these areas that are in the shadow parts and leave some of those white parts as they are and then the other ones that have been painted over I'm letting them be there with one layer of the base color instead of having multiple layers. So I'm just kind of sprinkling the color around here a few times, not really stressing out about trying to be perfect. And on the flower on the right, I was losing some of that warmth of the color. So I'm going in now with a little bit more of the Pyrrhal Scarlet because the Bordeaux kind of, it killed the color, it killed the intensity of it. But another layer of that and it warmed it right back up again. So I like to do lots of layers when I paint and that's one of the ways that I get my intensity and my contrast. So let that all dry. And then again, I'm gonna jump in with another layer of the Bordeaux. And now focusing on making sure I get that those centers looking really nice and letting those outside edges of the petals start to pop. And if you look closely, and some of you look closely all the time and critique my <laughs> painting, you'll notice I am not trying to get around every specific petal and do them all perfectly. I'm trying to find some of the ones that are obvious and fix a little bit of that, but I'm not really worried about that because I have one more thing I'm gonna do over the whole piece that's going to start to pull it together and nobody's gonna notice all those areas where I may not have done my painting specifically in inside the lines and handled each one of those shapes individually. Because with watercolor, people are looking for the overall effect. They're not looking at, did you color inside or outside of any lines? They're just looking, especially when I've got this really loose background, for something else. They're looking for the mood. They're not looking for the detail coloring. So what I'm doing now is mixing up a lighter color of each of these. And I'm gonna, just gonna go over most of the tips that were paper white I'm gonna leave some of them, but this is going to help cover any of those areas where I didn't get exactly all the painting done in exactly the right spots and everything. This is going to soften everything. It'll blend some of those edges. And yet, since I'm using such a light color, it's going to help to blend everything so it looks like it's all one flower. So I really love how these came out. They were really fun to do. It was a fun way to experiment with the Quin Rose and the Pyrrhal Scarlet and the Bordeaux and see what they do. I think the Bordeaux works a little bit with the warm colors, but I would tend to keep it with the cooler. And I did do a full painting 
over on my channel. So if you want to go see that, I painted these flowers. And both of these projects were done in conjunction with each other. So I'll talk a little bit more about the colors over in that video if you'd like to see a fine art painting. And that is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. Make sure you go over to the blog linked in the description to see my friend Lisa and what she's got to share about these colors as well. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.